STS-106 was a Space Shuttle mission to the International Space Station ISS flown by Space Shuttle Atlantis. Topic: Crew. Topic: Spacewalks. Lewin Malinchenko, EVA 1 EVA 1 start, the 11th of September 2000 to 4.47 Coordinated Universal Time EVA 1 end, the 11th of September 2000 to 11.01 Coordinated Universal Time Duration, 6 hours, 14 minutes <laughs> Mission highlights Space Station Assembly Flight ISS-2A, 2B utilized the SPACEHAB double module and the Integrated Cargo Carrier ICC to bring supplies to the station. The mission also included one spacewalk. Veteran astronaut Terence Wilcutt Col, USMC, lead the seven-man crew, commanding his second shuttle flight and making his fourth trip into space. During the planned 11-day mission, Wilcutt and his crew mates spent a week inside the ISS unloading supplies from both a double SPACEHAB cargo module in the rear of Atlantis's cargo bay and from a Russian Progress M1 resupply craft docked to the aft end of the Svezda service module. Svezda, which linked up to the ISS on 26 July, served as the early living quarters for the station and is the cornerstone of the Russian contribution to the ISS. Mission STS-106 was added to the manifest after delays in launching Svezda. The STS-101 flight was originally planned to carry cargo to the ISS and have three crew perform an EVA to connect Svezda to the ISS, but the delays caused the mission objectives of STS-101 to be split into 2A, 2A STS-101 and 2A, 2B STS-106. The three spacewalk crew members Lou, Williams, and Malinchenko followed their EVA onto STS-106. The goal of the flight was to prepare Svezda for the arrival of the first residence, or expedition, crew later in the fall of 2000 and the start of a permanent human presence on the new outpost. That crew, made up of Expedition Commander Bill Shepard, Soyuz Commander Yuri Gidzenko and Flight Engineer Sergei Krikalev, launched on 31 October 2000 in a Soyuz capsule from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan for a four-month shakedown mission aboard the ISS. On flight day three, Dr. Ed Liu and Yuri Malinchenko Col, Russian Air Force, who were both making their second flights into space, conducted a 6-hour and 14-minute spacewalk. The spacewalk's objective focused on routing and connecting nine power, data and communications cables between the Svezda module and the other Russian-built module, Zarya, as well as installing the 6-foot-long magnetometer. The magnetometer would serve as a three-dimensional compass designed to minimize Svezda propellant usage by relaying information to the module's computers regarding its orientation relative to the Earth. Lou and Malinchenko used tethers and handrails along the ISS to make their way to a point more than 100 feet above the cargo bay, the farthest any tethered spacewalker has ventured outside the shuttle. They completed this with the assistance of their crewmates Burbank and Mastricchio who deftly maneuvered them around with the robotic arm. This spacewalk celebrates the sixth spacewalk in support of the station assembly and the 50th spacewalk in space shuttle history. Also this was the second joint U.S.-Russian space walk outside a space shuttle, following on the work conducted by astronaut Scott Parazinsky and cosmonaut Vladimir Titov outside Atlantis while docked to the Mir space station during the STS-86 mission in October 1997. Lou, designated EV-1, wore the space suit marked by red stripes, while Malinchenko, EV-2, wore the pure white suit. 
This was Liu's first spacewalk, while Malinchenko had conducted a pair of spacewalks totaling 12 hours during his four-month stay aboard Mir in 1994. Dan Burbank Lieutenant. CMDR, USCG, who was a spaceflight rookie, served as the spacewalk choreographer. Mission specialist Rick Mastricchio, also a spaceflight novice, was the prime robot arm operator for the mission, using the Canadian built arm to move Lou and Malinchenko around the ISS as they conducted their assembly work. Mastricchio is backed up on arm operations by pilot Scott Altman, CMDR, USN, making his second flight into space. The final member of the crew was Russian cosmonaut Dr. Boris Marukov, making his first flight into space. Marukov was responsible for unloading supplies from the Progress vehicle during the docked phase of the flight. On flight day 4 the crew entered the International Space Station through pressurized mating adapter 2 PMA2 to begin the transfer operations of more than 3 tons of hardware and supplies. Atlantis crew was the first to see the interior of the Russian Svezda service module since it was launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in July. Additionally, a reboost was performed using the orbiter's reaction control system RCS to place the station in a higher orbit. Transfer of supplies and maintenance tasks continued well into the fifth day, while orbiter consumables remained above the required levels allowing managers to extend the mission one additional day. Activities on flight day 5 included the installation of three batteries inside Svezda. In order to reduce the weight for launch, Svezda was launched with only five of its eight batteries in place. Liu and Malinchenko spent much of flight day 7 installing voltage and current stabilizers in Svezda. Components of the electron system, equipment sent into orbit to separate water into oxygen and hydrogen, were installed and would be activated after the first crew arrives. The crew transferred more than 6,000 pounds of material, including six 100-pound bags of water, all of the food for the first resident crew, office supplies, onboard environmental supplies, a vacuum cleaner and a computer and monitor, to the interior of the station. The astronauts spent a total of five days, nine hours and 21 minutes inside the station before closing the hatch on the orbiting outpost. Wilcutt and Altman commanded a series of four altitude boosts to place the station in an orbit of approximately 241 by 233 statute miles, raising the average altitude by 14 miles 23 kilometers. After spending seven days, 21 hours and 54 minutes linked to the station, Atlantis undocked at 11.46 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time as Wilcutt and Altman fired Atlantis jets to move to a distance of about 450 feet for a double-loop flyaround. Commander Terry Wilcutt guided Atlantis to a landing at 2.56 a.m. Central Time, wrapping up a 4.9 million mile mission in which more than three tons of equipment were delivered to the international outpost. Wilcutt and his crewmates, pilot Scott Altman and mission specialists Ed Liu, Rick Mastricchio, Dan Burbank, Yuri Malinchenko and Boris Marukov completed the 23rd consecutive landing of a shuttle at the Florida spaceport, and the 30th landing of a shuttle at the Cape in the last 31 flights. The first initial amateur radio station was flown on board the Space Shuttle Atlantis on STS-106. The crew transferred the ham radio gear into the space station for future use by the Expedition 1 crew. Topic: See also List of human space flights List of International Space Station spacewalks List of space shuttle missions List of spacewalks and moonwalks 1965 to 1999 Outline of space science Space shuttle <laughs>